traveling to another dimension, a dimension of understanding. You are entering a place where reality collides with truth. There are no limits. There are no boundaries. This is our planet that we are. Welcome back to the second hour of Off Planet Radio Live. I'm Randy Moggins, and it is December the 12th, 2012. Sorry about that. We're getting some feedback, and that's largely because we're monitoring in studio tonight to do streaming over um, over Skype because of server difficulties. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. That was all covered in the last hour. And uh, I do need to uh, also announce that we uh, will have a guest one more time next week. Um, and Angel Rose O'Grady will be here. She's going to talk about... Um, actually, what she's going to talk about is probably going to be the optimistic side of 2012. And... Uh, she writes uh, a time of change, a cash of guidance for spiritual transformation. It's actually a very good view of things from the standpoint of what is happening on planet Earth, and it is not just this new age love and light stuff. There's a lot of hard reality contained in the book and in what she's been putting out as well. So that'll be next Wednesday night. That will be the last show for 2012. There's a three-week break that's going to happen because I need to um, realign some things. I have some projects that need to be completed, and I need to rest. And so um, we'll be back sometime in mid-January of 2013 with new shows, new guests, a new lineup. Um, <clears throat> and it's all good. It's all good. So having said all that i want to bring somebody on who's less of a guest and more of somebody i consider to be a friend and a confidant and somebody who embraces uh some understanding that um we're still working our way through and with that i want to introduce once again my friend james horak james welcome back to off planet radio Thank you, Randy. My privilege. Thanks for stepping in tonight, too. Um, as I pointed out, my, my guest for tonight, for whatever reason, couldn't be here. And you nobly uh, stepped into what has been uh, a pretty fiery show tonight. So thank you. Thank you, James. I, I would like to throw my hat in the ring. Uh, I, after listening to Mr. Hemingsway, it was very mindful of what you would expect from a major network representative to say about alternative media. Even the paranoid schizophrenia crap. Well, um, I didn't see anybody with a medical degree around to give me the diagnosis, but I'm assuming that that would mean I'm lined up for uh, a shot somewhere along the way and a nice stay in a padded room, but... I don't think anybody's medically qualified to make that assertion based on evidence that's been advanced so far. So, um, well, I, I'll venture. I'll venture my knowledge of psychiatry. I will say this: that anybody that attempts to defuse the situation that he, where he is, his guilt is found out uh, will do everything they can if they're a pathological narcissist to cast and attribute motives, cast aspersions and whatever, and to play that, that card. Uh, I guess uh, everybody in the alternative media who's got anything significant to say would, uh, in that category, be a paranoid schizophrenic. Wouldn't we? Almost by trade. Almost by trade. <laughs> Can I get a patch? <laughs> I'm a paranoid schizophrenic, too. I think the uh, the lines have thinned a lot. And I sort of... some You know, actually, there's people out there that have kind of embraced this idea of insanity being almost uh, interchangeable with uh, spiritual awakening. And I think anybody that's gone through intense spiritual awakening... 
whether you call it Kundalini or some other type of thing, understands that there is a point where it really does hinge on insanity. The question is what you do with what you receive out of those kind of experiences. And for some of us, it's been a lifetime journey in that realm as well. How about it, James? Well, I think you can keep your focus if you're telling the truth. If you're not telling the truth, then you backpedal like uh, Mr. Hemingway did. So we didn't. Uh, I didn't bring you on here tonight to talk about this. Like I said, I felt like I kind of blindsided you because all this came together after you and I uh, set things up tonight. Um, I just sort of made a decision that I was going to address it. And Duncan came basically on to just be online. He didn't plan on talking either. So... There's a lot of things that I would like to talk to you about tonight, and we sure. are, um, well, let's see, today's the 12th, we're coming up on the uh, the winter solstice on the 21st, and uh, I wanted to get your perspective on what's going to be happening, if you see anything specifically in that time frame, or what you project out based on your understanding, and based on what I know about you how you are able to receive certain very critical information streams, let's put it that way. Well, it, uh, I have for a number of years now talked about the split consciousness and that one of the things that uh, keep it an inherent trait of earthbound humanity is the uh, inconstant gravity wave caused by the almost constant adjustments that have to be made to keep our moon in orbit around the earth because it wants to go out it wants to come in and th this uh, this changes uh, not just the gravity wave but it changes their, their fields, magnetic fields on the moon and on earth that uh, are constantly changing and uh, this causes a rift in consciousness you have a subconscious and a conscious mind working against each other. You've got the conscious mind that is extremely fearful of the subconscious because the subconscious is capable of telling the truth in uh, very uncomfortable situations where the truth is not appreciated. Yeah. And, and so that gap, uh, it affects not only uh, uh, the ability of the mind to work together, but it affects uh, the way we observe time, cause and effect, uh, how we can be manipulated. Do you see a heightening polarity going on right now? I mean, and I'm even talking about mainstream. I'm, I observe people, and I have seen the energies ebb and flow over a long period of time, but I've seen quickening cycles right now, James. Of uh, and I'll just peg it as <clears throat> the first week in May we had this super moon, and I actually had some pretty profound experiences with that super moon um, that entailed <laughs> um, pretty interesting stuff, including portals and craft and watching people go through switching and things like that. But I'm seeing a quickening of cycles now where we're going through. Um, heightened heightened I guess you would call it contrast heightened uh, movements between almost uh, at times euphoria to just utter despair in people is that something that you're seeing and is that a symptom of what we're going through right now oh yes as a matter of fact if you remember Art Bell uh, he constantly referred to the quickening and uh, that was a, a theme that he followed up on uh, his show when he had specific guests. But uh, it, it is a valid uh, observation, and it has something to do with the cycles. It has something to do with uh, the desperation of the powers that be as they can drive more and more attempts at controlling us in our lives. So uh, what we have been involved in in the last few years uh, since 911 specifically has been uh, basically the reaction to uh, not 
knowing whether we should conform or not to the police state movements that we have seen government and military take. Uh, we, we are left uh, floundering more or less. Uh, the moral issues that have arisen uh, have uh, lied quietly in the back of people's minds. They know that Gaza is genocide. Mm-hmm. They know that uh, these chemtrails are, exist. They know that uh, Fukushima is still spewing out ice, radioactive isotopes into the atmosphere. They know all these things, but they wrestle with keeping this to the back of the mind. So we have a conflict going on in most people today between what they deny or unrealize that's there because they're not fools. They're not, they're not, uh, they, they have a quiet consciousness about some things, but in the back of it is this raring to know what the hell should I do next. And it's in, it's in most people. I, I come across it all the time. And whenever I say certain things, it comes out. And, they, and they're, they're happy to vet it because it's building there. And we're, going, we're coming up on a time when uh, this is going to be automated by the alignment of planets. Because as these planets line up, that's going to take more and more pressure of this pressure, this tug and pull of the moon and earth. So it's going to, for a period of time, alleviate this split consciousness that we live under, that, that is one of the ways we're controlled, one of the things we're controlled through, because the greatest, the most, uh, the greatest inner weakness that we have is ambivalence. And this split in consciousness keeps the ambivalence fire going. We center back to find a comfort zone. We, we, uh, you know, I talk about genius. What is genius? We don't have geniuses anymore on this planet that are out and out geniuses in anything they think about. Like we had in the Renaissance, in the pre-Renaissance era. The great men like Copernicus, uh, like Michelangelo, like Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. These were geniuses. These were geniuses in anything they tackled. We don't have them in, anymore. We don't have them anymore because we have over-compartmentalized. We've over-specialized. We've driven people into niches, and that's part of the mind control. So, you know, and, and the worst part of it uh, uh, of all is that we do have the potential for this sort of thing. But the information is denied them. The, the science has betrayed us. Government agencies that have data that, that would help us. If they throw the information out that they're hiding, you would be surprised who might step up. We might have a 12-year-old step up and make connections that scientists can't make. Oh, I absolutely believe that. In fact, I believe that right now there's uh, at least two generations walking this planet that are latent genius, and in some cases they call them um, attention deficit disordered, or they diagnose <laughs> them with um, uh, any a number of other, um, well, autism. Uh, I've met autistic children that I know what was latent inside of them was not even just genius but a beautiful soul in a protective cocoon it's almost like these souls have now come come into earth with armor around them to be birthed later after oh yes oh yes survival survival creates uh genetic potentials that uh, monsters don't want you to know anything about uh, I've often said that uh, what they're calling mutations is simply the stress that will cause certain genotypes that that normally, without this stress, would remain, uh, would not designate a particular trait. But under certain stresses where these combinations are beneficial to the survival of the species, and that particular trait is 
survival adding, it'll express in a combination that otherwise wouldn't express would remain genotypic as opposed to phenotypic. And I've said this uh, to a a lot of people, and uh, it's caught on with some of them. And they understand that uh, uh, these, these are the concerns of why there are so many black ops operations. We call them abductions today that are out to ferret out every genetic combination and what potential trait that it might under certain circumstances lead to and so forth like that. They can't do it. Even with Mr. Computer, the the uh, mainframe they're building in Utah, and they've finished. They've got that thing up and running. So uh, uh, what they're doing there, and this is another thing. Genetics and computer science, uh, they are creating more problems for themselves, for the obsessed controllers, then they understand. Then they'll ever be able to cope with. They're, it's just like uh, when somebody lights too many fires and says, well, I'll put this one out and that one. Eventually, there are too many to put out. And and that's what's going on politically. That's what's going on in science. It's, you know, uh, there we have a period of time now leading up to the 21st in which... All sorts of things can happen. I mean, it's not just that people are vetting out other people. It's not just that people are having uh, moments of depression and so forth. It's basically that in the back of, of so many people's minds is this awareness that we're on the cusp of something big. And they don't know whether they should fear it or welcome it. A revel in it, but uh, I would say I would revel in it, no matter what. I don't know if we've ever talked about this before, but we come into this world sort of cloaked with amnesia. But every human being on this planet has imprinted in them a reason and a mission for being. Would Would you agree with that? Well, that's sort of a adjunct from predestination. Okay. And, uh, well, I would say this. I would qualify that as an ingredient that, that some people work around in attitude. But I, I would give more, vastly more credit to uh, our attention to free will. I don't disagree with that at all, James. Well, I know you don't. In fact, uh, uh, we agree on most things. We do. We we, we, once we, we work our way around it. And the, the reason I ask you that is because um, I do believe in the potential of people and the potential good of people. And the roles that they play can become very convoluted. And the energies that we're dealing with now are elevating things in a way that is almost dividing humanity in terms of both who's playing light and who's playing dark and probably who's going to survive and who's not. Well, it's 50-50. You have a 50-50% chance of surviving this lineage and becoming a part of something much faster, much greater. 50-50. And you've never had that before. And there have been other lineages. You know, the evidence of that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is uh, carefully suppressed, but still, uh, it's there. You know, they can't suppress all of it. And uh, we hear stories from time to time, but uh, every time that there is a monumental work that is discovered, the first people on the, uh, to uh, get access to the interior of it, are the Illuminati. They send out their uh, Bilderberger trained individual like they have with this recent find in the Basagi Mountains in Romania. Right, Peter Moon's work with uh, Transylvania Sunset, Sunrise. 
Yeah. And uh, they make sure that if there's any records in there of a prior lineage that's warning the people of today what went wrong then, that they don't get it, that, they, that it's suppressed. And that's a concern. It's really been almost like we've been sheltered from understanding our roots, both in terms of origin on Earth and galactically. Well, you know, uh, uh, I, if, you, if you pay attention, if you uh, have done some research over the past 20 years, you know, I, like I'm sure you have, you know that there are events that have happened that they're rewriting today. Yes, I'm watching history being rewritten in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And, that the, and that even though we have technology creating new concepts that require new terms and phrases, every day almost, the dictionary is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's no accident. Because, you know, the, the richness of our thoughts are put together and constructed with words. You have fewer words, you have less rich thoughts, to express at least. Of course, there are visionaries that don't need words, but that's another thing. Well, as I understand it, you know, going back to the court of Queen Elizabeth I and the Rosicrucians, they had planned for a time when language would contract. In fact, English itself was a, a <clears throat> sort of a designer language that collapsed Old German into English with the purpose of... There's thoughts we can't communicate even now. And anybody that's ever studied a foreign language knows the difficulty there is in taking certain phrases. I mean, I studied French. There are terms in French that don't translate well into English Hence, the original thought. Russian's a very complex language. Um, German also contains these embeds. So, in a lot of ways, we have a truncated language system, which means that we are no longer able to intellectually or verbally express certain things that I believe were coded into us. I think that's one of the things that uh, William Shakespeare was fighting against. Samuel Johnson fought against it. Uh, truncation is a perfect word to use for for, for uh, the thought limiting of language, and of course, uh, although uh, Mr. Orwell plagiarized 1984 from Zemitin's "We," uh, he didn't do do the justice when he was describing Newspeak that. Uh, Zemitin did, and uh, it it Zemitin <coughs> saw up close what bureaucratic terminology would lead to, and he knew that uh, uh, that it would catch on with vernacular and that it would change, uh, it would become uh, politicized. In our language today, uh, it, much of the same thing is happening. It's very subtle. But we see it first in the news media, and then it begins to spread and take on uh, its own personality over a period of time. And uh, I'm not talking about the way that uh, youngsters truncate their text messages and so forth. That could be harmless if they are given a decent education to begin with, but they're not. So it's so it's a threat. It's a threat to. Uh, creative thinking and you know we need all the creative thinking that we can get um, I have a question that came out for the chat room um, is asked the last time James you were on um, you were asked what the purpose of man on planet earth was and you replied to survive and that you mentioned survival again just now it is our spiritual purpose to exist on earth no, no. Uh, I know there are people that believe, and just some some really good people that believe this is a test. Uh, everything is an experiment in the universe. Uh, I, I don't know about intention, about the great. I know that there is a designer 
because I see that in everything. I don't have to have any privilege over anyone else to go out in my backyard and see the design of a tree, to see the, the animals that are constantly running around and, and to see the, the way in which uh, all of these respond to you. Uh, but uh, when you mess with nature, you create chaos. When you uh, disregard nature, when you try to, to pretend that nature doesn't matter or you can supersede her or you can uh, betray her like... Uh, the money do today, then you're in big trouble. And so then, I guess, maybe that uh, aspect of soul testing comes into it. But but uh, uh, it, it's not along the lines that that uh, your soul is in danger or your spirit, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever. It's it's a matter of of what succeeds best in the universe. The follow-up to that was basically a rephrasing, and, and they ask, is there a spiritual purpose? Oh, yes. There's always a spiritual purpose. Uh, all spirits are, are immortal. Uh, the, a spirit, as, uh, regarding a, 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 the difference between a soul and a spirit, a spirit is a complete mind and soul, embodied, uh, that which happens, uh, receives a a uh, unified consciousness at the time of death and uh, of course there are people that have had near death experiences that know this to be true they'll tell you but maybe not in those words and when they come back they're different and uh, I have known people that because they uh, had had uh, massive brain damage or severe brain damage when that mind went back to repair itself and heal, got rid of all that rubbish that we that we grow up being fed until we're six or seven years old, which drives that gap between the subconscious and the conscious mind further. And they, one of them in particular that I know, has unified consciousness, which is wonderful. And this guy is... Really neat. <laughs> there are people that walk among us that possess this ability, James. And I don't know that we quickly identify them, but when you encounter beings, and specifically human, um, I think there's a power, a magnetism to that because they're not only connected fully to their own being, but they're connected to all the things that you've talked about. And it goes back to the EMVs and this intelligent management of the solar system and how we're not just floating human entities. We're connected to something greater. We're connected to the power behind the EMVs, behind the Earth itself. You called earth she and i believe that kind of alludes to the fact that we understand that there's a living consciousness that's embraced by what we consider to be nothing more than rocks and dirt circling around in space at some point or another everything becomes purposeful uh and the the drive to eliminate what is not pers purposeful or aberrant uh, has never caught on here due to this split consciousness and the way it's been opportunized and that a technology developed to maintain that. And uh, there are a number of things that if you changed, even the, uh, the way in which electricity is generated, mm -hmm. If you change these things, you will notice uh, a, a growing uh, consciousness in people that is a lot more productive, that is a lot more coherent, a lot more uh, moral. Uh, people uh, are less than they should be 
but through artificial means. I mean, it's not natural for there to be a number of aberrancies like that uh, mall shooting that you were talking about. Uh, that's not natural. That's not part of, of anything other than uh, aberrancy. And, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that I discuss is, is common sense, and that is if you have a culture that has star travel technology, you possess a technology that one person can put in their hand and destroy a planet with. And uh, so you can't, uh, that culture can't entertain aberrancy either collectively or individually. So it, in order for it to survive its own technology, it has to find a way to remove these unnatural, like aberrancy, from the collective and from the individual. And, and it's not it, it, it's not a matter of uh, punitive uh, measures. It's not a matter of eugenics. It's not a matter of anything other than culture. And uh, I remember a story when Norway was occupied by the Germans in World War II. Uh, there was this little hamlet that had a mayor. And the, the German commandant uh, called the mayor in one day and said, uh, it is uh, wonderful the way that you have discipline here because we haven't had any crime or any petty theft or anything since I've been here. I must say, uh, this is uh, incredible discipline. And the mayor looked at him and said, uh, no, it isn't discipline. It's culture. <laughs> That's actually an interesting observation as well because, and we actually used to talk about this for a while in a I sort of distorted context, but back in the 80s, um, we had the culture wars, which were largely narrowed into conservative and liberal um, dogma, but there was this idea that there was a war on the culture. And you and I have lived long enough, we've seen the changes that have happened in over the last 40 or 50 years of our lives and how people are less genteel, less well-spoken, less respectful. I mean, even just a lot of the things that I talked about in the first hour tonight, these were not things that were done in public because there was a code and the code was based on honor and we've seen almost all of that now evaporate. Well, the first thing that uh, <clears throat> a uh, manipulator, invader, in this way, in, in in this time frame, globalist, tries to do is to uh, hatch up a mentality that uh, makes people that that have these complaints like you and me, <coughs> to believe that they've got the answer for all these problems that they've created. You know, that you create the problem, you offer the solution, and then you come in and you grab more control. It's an old Hegelian formula. And, you know, it, uh, it, it's being used now more than ever, and uh, people either never understood the model or they're blithe. You know, I'd rather think they don't understand the model rather than be indifferent to something that is after every everything they have, including their last breath. And, you know, I don't know what to think of people that uh, can't get to first base with the obvious other than that they are under my control. And that's what we have. We have a large population of people that are uh, in denial about the obvious because it's in front of them every day. Uh, they uh, work harder. They make less money, or at least they have less spending power than than their uh, their parents had. And uh, you know, I can remember when a man could 
could uh, make a good living and support a family and kids and send them to college and have a two-car garage and two cars in it on his salary. And now a man and a woman both working can't do that. Well, and they've buried our culture in this financial system, this toxic money system of debt, that everything's financed and funded by debt. And the illusion that is money is extended exponentially in terms of debt because of the leverage that they've put behind it, Um, the bundling of all these debts and sale to foreign countries, which have resulted in compromising our national sovereignty as well as our financial ability to even negotiate on a global level in terms of currency exchange and things like that. Um, And I can't help but think I know that this was pretty much all designed a long time ago. I mean, anybody that does the research can go back through the record and see that this was all planned you know, the funny thing about these people is that they map everything out in front of us, and we're so damn stupid we can't even read what's in black and white. Well, you know, uh, the last time this country was facing the emergencies that it is today it was the Great Depression. Coming out of the Great Depression gave uh, certain uh self-made tyrants the ability to actually work a whammy for the cartels and the families that own the cartels to steal gold uh, that was artificially priced in this country at at between $38 an ounce to $42 while it was going on the London Metals Exchange for $100. But to steal that, rape the country's gold supply Uh, Go in uh, on Black Thursday and go through everybody's safe deposit box and steal whatever they wanted to and uh, more than anything else, the gold, and haul it off. Most people never were never uh, compensated for that. Uh, That was uh, that's what's coming now. You know, I wouldn't recommend anybody buy gold because they can impose a gold. a gold act again and take it away from you and say, well, you, you're you an American citizen, you can't owe gold. Well, I think my guest last week kind of mapped that out a little bit. If you're an American citizen, you gave them consent to take your gold anyway, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Well, I, that uh, people forget that that was in effect for 40 years. It went into effect in 1934. <clears throat> And stayed in effect until 1974 and was repealed under Gerald Ford. It was one good thing he did. But then again, what happened? It, you found out that a lot of people have been hoarding gold and came up with it and started selling it. And, uh, you know, the market for gold grew out of that. And, uh, it wasn't for a number of years before before it was reflected honestly in value. But uh, uh, gold is an arbitrary standard anyway, and so is silver. So is platinum. Platinum is far more plentiful than you're told. Uh, just like diamonds. Oh my gosh! Both- yeah, yeah, no, those. These are commodities I'm familiar with, and you know, platinum is just outrageous. What is this? Like seventeen over seventeen hundred dollars an ounce right now. I'll tell you something about platinum. Uh, the platinum producing producing nations are allowed to produce a certain percentage of the platinum that's used. Uh, the greatest consumer of platinum is the oil industry because they use it. Uh, as a catalyst yes. in refining gasoline from oil. And uh, it, some of it isn't recovered. So they're the greatest user of it. But uh, platinum is plentiful. Uh, that's the, the Rothschilds the, control the platinum cartel. Uh, so they're not going to appreciate what I'm going to tell you. Uh, Canada produces a share its fair share, so to speak, of platinum in its mind in the Laurentian Shield area of, of Canada. 
and it is very sensitive about how much of an economy that that, that uh, represents, so that it's top secret just how much that they produce and how much money they get and what percentage of the GNP, the Canadian GNP, it represents. But uh, the uh, formation that is mined in the Laurentian Shield isn't nearly as enriched as where it pops up in Washington State. <laughs> wow, who knew that? Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Uh, <clears throat> that formation is called the Golden Formation. It goes all the way across the country, and is in the richest part is in the United States. <laughs> I'll give you a place where I prospected, and I got I got chunks of of, of, of platinum near the vein that blow your blow your mind. A ton of it make you rich, and that's uh, in uh, Yakima. Washington, and I just love betting this. <laughs> in, in Yakima, Washington, there the part of the Golden Formation that is very apparent. In other words, there are black hills out there called Rattlesnake Hills. Guys, if you will just go down and run a placer operation below Rattlesnake Hills in Yakima in the creeks and everything, you will be able to legally get rich very quick off placer platinum i'm pretty certain though that bureau of land management probably has a lot of this locked down don't they no no, no. that's open ground that's open ground now now in texas we don't have any blm land it's all uh comes through the uh economic geology department of the university of texas that's what they subsidized uh, that school with which uh you know the oil companies corrupted that a long time ago if you find anything of mineral worth even if it's not oil you have to put it up for bed and of course the oil companies are there waiting in line who's whoever's turn it is to grab it right out from underneath you but there's gold and silver in Texas, and there, you know, there isn't much platinum. But there sure is up in Washington and across the north, uh, all the way to Canada, uh, above Minnesota. So, uh, uh, you know, and I hope I hope some people get smart to this and get wise to it because you know it's about time the truth came out, and uh, you know, uh, I know. Uh, I know so much about this because I prospected and because I came across so much stuff. And uh, I worked uh, as a fire assayist uh, when I needed money. And uh, I was working in a laboratory in Grand Junction, and I was looking at the – there is a manual on how to dress uh, ore for fire assay or for – acid tests and so forth and this manual is is pretty good and the older it is the better it is but it uh, it uh, uh, tells you that if you fire assay for the precious metals gold and silver that uh, if you don't prepare your specimen before you put it in the furnace with the copper reduction method mm -hmm. that the platinum will go up in a vapor and just you know it'll precipitate in the flume it tells you that but there isn't a, a fire assayist or chemist today that'll do that because they all know they'll get in trouble and they'll lose their contracts with the government. They'll, uh, if they're doing water works, water, uh, uh, you know, testing the purity of the water, making sure there's no contaminants from oil company exploration, that sort of thing, where they make the most of their money, then they'll lose all that if they let the cat out of the bag. Mm -hmm. I saw it. I, and, and, uh, uh, at, my, at the time where I was working in this lab in Grand Junction, the, the chemist there was a very good chemist, and I got on to him about that. And he just shook his head. He wouldn't say a word. And uh, so uh, I'd go out, and I, he, he liked to drink. And I'd go out after the day's work and get a bottle of Old Fitzgerald, which he liked. 
and we'd sit down and get just soused on it. But I'd get <laughs> some stuff out of him when I did it. I love this guy. He he was uh, he he was a damn good chemist and a good man. So there you go. There's your uh, there's your tip for how to uh, perhaps. Oh, I can tell you a lot of crap like that. <laughs> I can tell you. I mean, I'm full of it. But you know, that's just one of them. I think that every show I'm going to do, I'm going to at least bring one revelation to you. That's good. That's golden. And uh, you know, I think anybody that goes back through the conversations you've had with anybody finds nuggets. I listened to one of our shows, one of the first ones we did, and I'm like, I didn't hear that the first time. No, no, it. it uh, we we live in a society that is where secret keeping is the mainstay of the powers that be. And, you know, uh, there are a lot of people that have asked me, well, if that's true, why aren't you rich? And then the next thing they'll ask me, well, if you say that, and it's such a big secret, why aren't you dead? <laughs> I, I just say, well, you know, <laughs> I live a charmed life, I guess. Well, I think you have a fair amount of protection also. Well, I hope so. I, I hope believe so. you do. Um one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, we've kind of skirted around it, is 2012 and <clears throat> what you see coming. And you have a marvelous show that you did with Shuni and Tours, um, 2012, The Return of Electric Consciousness. And I don't necessarily want you to repeat everything on there because I want people to hear this and I'm going to post it. But can you kind of nutshell a little bit Electric Consciousness and this... Um, contraction of time space that you're seeing coming well uh, I'm, I made some some uh, ambitious statements and it's going to be different for everyone because everyone's different uh-huh. but you're going to you're going to have the closest thing to unified consciousness to what your ancestors had uh, from uh, late night on the 21st and it may continue uh, there are things that are in place to make this more enduring than it would otherwise be uh, Mayan shaman uh, that I listened to uh, I was very impressed with here recently who gave a dissertation on this and uh, he did his best to reconcile ancient beliefs I saw that uh, video, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I liked him very much, and uh, uh, now we have uh, the powers that be concerned about that, so that they are banning the Mayan priests from their temples on the twenty-first, which it shows you <laughs> that there's something to this, right? <laughs> My understanding is that they're also closing Giza in that period of time as well, which yeah. I, I I thought at the time that I saw it was jaw dropping. Um, I don't know if they closed it earlier this month because we had another critical juncture, but my understanding is that Giza is going to be closed. So effectively, they're trying to shut down the sacred sites of the planet right now. Well, they work. Uh, uh, these, uh, many of these monuments, not all of them, are built because uh, these people had. Uh, an understanding of harmonics that we don't have today. It was the Indians that taught the Spanish how to prospect for gold. They had uh, they had divining pendulums that they used, and I've I've seen some of these come out of Indian graves. They look like plumb bobs, and they're usually out of a particular type of of rose granite, and they're beautiful. And uh, I had a gentleman give me one one time. So this is like a dowsing rod. Uh, well, a divining pendulum is so much better because okay. a divining pendulum can answer uh, any question that mm -hmm. you ask mm -hmm. and give a yes or no answer. So you can sit there, how deep is it? Uh, is it gold or is it, you know? And, and uh, what, a, what a divining pendulum is... It's a meeting place for the conscious and subconscious mind. Unified consciousness. Well, 
at that point at the little that focus yeah that's, that, that's what that's i'm where, asking you yes yeah, yeah. it uh, uh because it's working uh it's the the uh subconscious has a way of communicating to the conscious through harmonics with the divining pendulum or with the divining rod or sometimes with a ouija board but uh, uh, it is an elegant construct which gives the uh, subconscious a chance. And the only other time that it gets a chance is in a significant dream. And uh, we have significant dreams, but we don't keep dream journals. And if we well, did... Not all of us don't. <laughs> yeah, if we did, because they leave us. They leave us. The conscious mind has a centering mechanism to get rid of it because like I said your conscious mind is so afraid of the subconscious that it is preventing you from from gaining the use of it you put these two together you have a collective consciousness you don't otherwise have and you have access to genetic knowledge you have these two things, and uh, of course, if you get, if you're born, and then you suffer a brain injury, you don't, you have to be trained to get that collective consciousness, and I don't know, I've never seen anyone that got, that, that uh, obtained the genetic knowledge, but they, uh, they become rapidly, they become so much more than they were before and I wrote an article on this uh, UN officer who was a North African uh, native who uh, had uh, lost just about all the brain above the brain pan and yet became a veritable genius. Yeah, there's a number of surgeons I'm trying to think um, uh that have written about diminished brain mass or even in some cases separation of brain hemispheres that have seen this. I think it was Dean Radin wrote about this. Um, we're dealing with something that's quantum and not quantitative at the same time. Well, let me tell you the mechanism. And I teach this in Unified Consciousness. One of the principles of unified consciousness is power of expectation. So if a brain surgeon is going to operate on you, he prepares you for the worst, doesn't he? Yeah. All well, surgeons do the, that. <laughs> a, a, a shaman. You'll be great if you don't die. <laughs> yeah, a shaman prepares you for the best. And that's why these people that have this uh, primitive brain surgery, trephining, uh, out in the wilds of Africa, like this gentleman I was talking about, they come out with the very, very best consequence, and it is it is remarkable. I mean, I wish that uh, that they hadn't decided to hide that documentary because that documentary was worth oh, it was just elegant, but it. Uh, uh, they went to see the shaman that had done the, the trephining on this this UN officer, and uh, he told them where how to find him. And uh, so they find out uh, some. <laughs> my God, you know, this guy has done uh, over two thousand trephining operations. Never lost a patient, and uh, almost all of them are improved. Because they, this, these tribes practice ceremonial warfare, and sometimes people get head injuries or they fall or something. They're so far out in the bush uh, that that's the only way that they can deal with uh, minimizing the damage. And so, uh, you know, they're, do you know there are even trephining societies? Let's say that again. What type of societies? Trephining that do that bore holes in people's heads so they can think clearer. <laughs> really, I don't recommend it. I'm not pushing that. That don't do that. But well, that kind of goes back to the whole third eye ceremony and Tilap Sangrampa 
uh, where they literally would burn into the center of the forehead to open the third eye. That's brutal. Um, I think we have that more. That wouldn't be the place I would do it. If I was going to no, do I, something as silly as that, that wouldn't be the place I would do it. No, no, no. You've got to go further up on the cranium. Yeah. My point is that you just dropped some nuggets that people need to connect, and one of them is um, the energies that you're talking about that are coming in such a very short period of time now. Um, are there things that we can do to begin prepare, and also what do we do on this particular night? when you say these energies are coming in, when we're going to begin to experience this? Be up at 10 o'clock. And, uh, you know, if you've got friends and... Uh, now, you say 10 ha- o'clock, you're central time, I'm eastern, so coordinate that off UTC, I guess. Yeah, I would, uh, I would <laughs> say re- relative to uh, coming into the new day, uh, a couple of hours coming into the new day, because... Uh, it's not going to happen simultaneously over the planet, and this is just roughly. But uh, the, I would make a I would make a, a celebration out of it. I would I would be with all your friends, and uh, you know if if it's not too cold, build a bonfire and, and sit around it and talk about uh, your expectations, because uh, expectations have their own power. But uh, it's like the shaman said, you know, pencil and paper. Well, uh, if you talk about what you experience, it'll be as good as pencil and paper because you shared it with another person. Actually, my understanding of that is better because of the vibrational aspect of our voices and the creative aspect of sound. And you talked about harmonics a little bit, and I'm real interested in that. I mean, I've worked with it playing music and doing sound engineering and it's a fascinating subject that I know far too little about but I understand the vibration yes and uh, it this this goes right back into what I said about uh, we uh, uh, produce electricity at 60 cycles per second that's bad it's very bad yes it is and uh, we could go uh, you know people in Europe that uh, that are getting 220 uh, are brighter, have more clarity of thought, just simply because of that. And uh, of course, uh, you remember all the trouble Tesla went through just to try oh, yeah. to get oh, yeah. and this- Edison to to buy into alternating current. Okay, Colorado. This backed right into your question you ask about. Uh, Changing the electrical megahertz of radio broadcasts in Nazi Germany. So that gives you a little indication of exactly what this was about. Yeah. Yeah. See, we answer uh, questions on the chat room. We just back into them. James probably doesn't even know you asked that. No, but uh, it's a good question. And, uh, you know, the, uh, we have lived among people that are so concerned with maintaining their status quo that they will do anything they'll subject us to anything to that they think is going to uh, keep them in power and keep them in riches and and keep them in control <coughs> well, they don't I, understand the human heart because they've denied they have one. They deny spiritual reality. They deny God. They deny, uh, you know, I, if you ask me what God is, I would just simply say, uh, I know there's something that is responsible for the design and the, th- the things that I see, not just uh, astral, but uh, small things, things that most people don't are not really impressed with because they see it all the time. But I am. I mean, I... I think part of this awareness that you're talking about comes with an understanding of the uniqueness of the things we see around us and even how we see things around us. 
Oh, yes. Um, oh. While I enjoy going out into the desert in Sedona, I can walk a few miles from here and be in mountains. And the mountains are different every time I go there. They almost It almost sometimes feels like a stage was prepared for you to go into nature. Well, it's a special place. And uh, there are a lot of people that uh, that live there that have uh, uh, gone there because uh, they heard that it was a place where they could find, uh, where they could suffer a quiet spirit, so to speak, mm-hmm. yeah. and where they could be more attuned to themselves and to others and to nature. And, and that's true. And it, uh, uh, even though it's it's not that far from atomic testing and uh, and other things that have been used it has a way of purifying itself and uh sedona is uh is a wonderful place to be i've been there a few times and wish i could have lived there mm, yeah um do you kind of see this 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 thing that's happening specifically on the 21st as kind of a wave is it that kind of um, movement, Randy. It can be what you make of it. It can. It, what you're going to have. It's like. Uh, it's like. <clears throat> for some people, it's going to be dramatics. For others, it's, uh, you know. For you, you're already aware. You you have uh, your feet on the ground. You you have common sense, common decency. Uh, you don't lack very much. So for you, uh, your joy is going to be in watching other people that you know benefit. And, uh, you know, back during one of the things that was so hip to do was watch other people when they did their drugs, uh, how they would react. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I I, I fully appreciate that, yeah. Yeah, I remember. That was a lark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And of course, I walked my share of people having a bad acid drip off. Yep. I but, saw that uh, too. I saw people know, who wrecked their their minds with uh, some pretty hardcore stuff. I mean, I'm not an advocate yeah, the of stuff that, that Timothy loosely. Leary was peddling. Um, there's levels to everything, and some people were just excessive, and they abused themselves, and. They paid a horrible price for it, but we talk about consciousness, and then we have this whole ascension meeting. And by the way, we're going to go past time here. I know Dave always is really good about this, but I, I wanted to keep you on for a little while, James, because the show kind of got cut off early. But we have this whole ascension meme that's circulated now to, to the point where, in a lot of ways, to me, it feels... Tawdry. It feels like it's lost its luminance. But there's a valid concept contained in that that I don't, I don't want to see get lost in the meme machine of the Internet because as human beings, we're going through a shift. Some of us have known this for, you know, all of our lives, frankly, and sensed it very strongly for a number of years. The elevation... Well. The elevation of that is important, but at the same time, staying focused on what that means exactly, because it's not spiritual superior, superiority, right? Well, we have we have people that, uh, because they have been disappointed in religion and religious teachings, the same way that you and I have been, but they uh, elect to... Uh, deny God, to deny the Spirit, and so forth. The, these people aren't committing a crime. They are reacting in their own way to what they see as fraudulent. And the religion uh, has has justified that reaction, whether we want to think of it or not. And so today we see the woo-woo crowd doing the same thing to many people who want to uh, be spiritual, who want to uh, study the spiritual and define it for themselves, but they come in contact with these people that uh, the woo-woo crowd yeah. that uh, that 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 are 
moral cowards, basically, because they use woo-woo to keep from being accountable for doing anything about the evils and about the harm done others. They teach pe- try to teach people, oh, if you just meditate or if you just, you know, keep to the positive and all this while these children are being abused, while uh, people are, are being, you know, genocide is going on in Gaza, while all this evil is going on and we're being fed a pack of lies about all of it and they're sitting there meditating. You know, that's disgusting, and uh, no, I can understand I can why tell you, I can tell you that what I learned about meditation, I learned when I was young, and what I've learned about it as I've aged is you don't need to meditate anymore. The whole point of meditation is to be able to access a state that you can go into whenever you need to. It's a contact point, and ideally yeah, it, you would it, live in that. That. It teaches you how to uh, overcome tension and overcome angst and assume a quiet spirit. But, you know, there's no reason if you are wise and you have learned the ways of the world and you, you anticipate the, the reactions you're going to get when you speak the truth. And, you know, you're go- to, in the morning when you wake up, you're going to be over all that BS that that liar put out on you, you'll be over it because you know how. But there are people that it'll eat them up and eat them up and eat them up. But you ventilate it and you, you'll be over it because you know how, Randy. Yeah. But there are a lot of people that don't. So meditation is an escape from what they can't deal with, basically. And there's nothing wrong with that for them, but they can learn uh, it, by learning the substance of something very, very thoroughly. Uh, you you overcome using it as a crutch, and they use it as a crutch. hate to say that, but they're using meditation as a crutch to escape reality, to not have to face it. It's the form of denial the way they do it. And thank you for that. Um, that was that was actually a very succinct way of putting it because I've spent months trying to nutshell the concept of what it is that some of these people out there are peddling. Um, well, if you're a cottage in- industry, you have a price, don't you? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's a cottage industry. At the end of the day, it's about money, fame, and power. Yeah. Yeah, there they uh, there are a lot of people that are in ufology and in alternative media that uh, are, if they had a chance, if they had the money or whatever, they'd be up on Wall Street or they'd be running a corporation or whatever, and they'd be doing the same thing in the Gulf of Mexico. BP did. And justifying it the same way BP did. And, uh, you know, and they'll tell you, if you ever nail them down, they'll say, well, you do it too. Because it's the cost of doing business, that's the one well, that I always yeah, heard. Well, yeah. these, are, these are narcissists, and there are a lot of them. There's a growing <laughs> number of narcissists, and, uh, and, you know, to a narcissist, there's no one, nothing in the universe better than them. Better than them. They're the ultimate. They are I God. Right? By contrast, if we're going to go through this heightened, um, I'll just call it, well, you call it a gravity wave, an energetic, is there not going to be equal and opposite reactions or am I dragging Newtonian physics into this? No, I I don't see anything negative coming out of it. You're going to see, I think, uh, uh, I think that it'll be dramatic enough. There'll be people who are in a comatose state coming. Well, that's what I was getting at. I get the sense that some people are just going to go nuts. No, no, no. They'll just be. They'll just be more truly what they are, and uh, self-aware. 
I think so, a lot of people that uh, uh, are on the wrong track or misguided or whatever, that may change. Oh, uh, I would really like to see that. I really yeah. would. I'd like to believe for that. Well, they're going to have their moment of clarity. And, uh, you know, if they're capable of insightful thinking and uh, not too self-absorbed, uh, I, I think we'll end up with more friends, personally. I'm hoping that we will, and and uh, hopefully the, that our shaman and, and uh, other forces in the solar system will find a way to make this enduring, endure more than the 18 minutes that uh, these bodies will be in perfect alignment. Do you talk in this interview about, and I'm, I'm quoting here from the post that uh, Tours put up, Soon you'll see days and seconds, years and hours, eons in a lifetime. In that compression mode, all of a sudden, time really kind of collapses on itself, doesn't it? You are going to have a taste of uh, what I call time compression, where uh, time is no longer the lard of your life and and uh, where you're beyond this obsession with time. Yeah, yeah, and see, that's what that to me is so exciting because that's something I've seen for a long time. There, there. When these planets align, there'll be uh, an assonance that uh, you're talking about. Harmonics will will. Uh, affect the, the universal harmonics of consciousness. And uh, uh, the important thing is, and this, this, uh, this is the principle, the guiding principle of it all. Once you realize you get a taste of something like this and you share it with others, it concretes the memory of it and the taste of it and the feel of it so that you know what's possible if you know what's possible then you've got something to work for and study and believe in and I think that uh, there will be people that uh, hear what I say about design and say oh well what's that but they're going to know firsthand what that is uh, because they'll have the way of pulling things together in such a way that they'll see design it's a, it's a form of clarity, and uh, that's what we're missing. We've got so many facts, we've got so much data, and none of it mixes right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Why this war against grasping the concepts that you've brought forth, and even the, the deliberate willful distortion of Dr. Bergeron's work recently... Why is this so disturbing to the order? There, you have to understand. And I realize that, that sounds like an obvious question, but I'm still you, baffled by it. You can't control people who are capable of clarity. You can't control them. And clarity can be, begin with very small things. But clarity does not exist where truth is not the standard. And if you make truth the standard, you can have clarity, you can possess it, but it's the most uncompromising uh, force, most compromising energy there is, most uncompromising and it uh, it will not it will not uh, tolerate. It's like the subconscious mind. If you've got possession of that subconscious mind to work with the conscious mind, my God, man, it uh, you you uh, you know you have a strong sense of right and wrong, and that puts you at odds with more people than it should. And and the manipulators can come along and use that, like uh, this Hemingsa. 
way. And uh, uh, he didn't do a good job of it. You know, he needs a little more training by social engineers. <laughs> but uh, but he, he's, you know, he's got the makings of a good manipulator. He's got the will for it. The will to lie. And I hope he has a comment about me now. <laughs> <laughs> I really I really like, you know, the way you kind of pictured this because the barometer of humans right now is, is is all over the map. And we go into an insane mode this time of year because of the commercial system that has attached itself to the false religion that calls itself Christianity. And I I, I get really cranky this time of year, and I don't like to. I, you know, I think this is why Dickens was commissioned to write Scrooge. But I don't, <laughs> I don't want to dump on, on you know, joy that people may get from things either, because that gets judgmental too. But it's like watching people right now is painful, because they are pressured. They're very obviously under stress. They're in a hurry. They're very unaware of anything around them. And this is the most dangerous point in which to live in that agitated, completely segregated form of consciousness. You know, there are people that benefit from being religious. I understand that. Uh, and that's, yeah, I, I understand that. And they're a benefit to their fellow man because of their religion and uh but but you know a, a true christian is a wonderful being you know i really understand are. that you know if they would just read what was spoken by the master well yes. they uh there you know there's this much mis misdirection and mind control uh in religion and uh it, you know uh i was accused after I started speaking out of having a Christ complex. <laughs> and I and my reply was, well, if I have to have a complex, that's a pretty good one to have. But uh, uh, seriously, if you keep the Ten Commandments, that's going to put you at odds with so many people in this world today, isn't it? It's going to be tough. Well, they got refined down to three, and I don't think we're keeping those. I mean, uh, basically what Jesus said was contained within the three commandments was the law and the prophets, and that was love your neighbor as yourself and, you know, love God, which means yeah. that you have to love the creation of which we are ourselves part of that foundation. You know, basically well, what I'm I, saying is the fractal aspect of God is embedded in humanity and their consciousness. Well, you know, even even if you look at uh, the religious teachings emanating from from uh, many of the religions that have survived, uh, they basically teach you, you know, that uh, you're stewards of the earth and keep faith with that. And in so doing, I mean, you you pretty much a, an ecologist, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's an you term. would you would uh, really have to come on being you. You'd have to come down on whatever caused Fukushima, and you wouldn't rest until you found out, would you? <sighs> yeah, and that's like pulling teeth out of a whale because it's been so obfuscated at this point and you wouldn't be raising children to go to afghanistan would you no you wouldn't well and probably thinking twice about even going to the west coast of the united states <laughs> and i'm sorry because i have people i love on the west coast of the united states and yeah. our government who was supposed to serve us has hung us out to drive because like what happened in the gulf is we had a disaster of frankly epic proportions that was obfuscated lied about co covered over and actually turned into a bigger disaster as a result of negligence and greed 
and that's the that's the world that we live in and that's the consciousness that god i pray i hope you know somehow or another what you're talking about can begin to loosen the grip of that particularly dark spirit we don't know we don't know we uh uh we we do what we can and that's what's important you know that good people do what they can that they be brave and speak out that they go to their neighbors and even though they may be thought out of line or or over the over the top or whatever that they try that they try they try to reach their neighbors and I'll tell you something there'll come a time when their neighbor will say you know, you cared for me. Mm-hmm. You cared for me. And that'll mean something. And uh, that's that's what, that's what uh, you know, uh, all men should look upon themselves as brothers. That's the, the height of elegance for any philosophy or teaching. Because it, it, it allows us to identify with each other in ways that we might not have and to realize that uh, that uh, this brotherhood w- that we feel is greater uh, as it grows in, in uh, the effort that we make to keep peace with each other, to understand each other, uh, to, to try to establish something more than just uh, a shallow understanding or uh, a phrase that's supposed to denote uh, an emotional response to what the government wants you to have uh, so that they can vilify somebody or they can turn you against a notion that uh, that is not in keeping with their immediate agenda so you know if you want to overcome tyranny you first do it at an individual level as a person and you experiment with how best to reach others to do the same thing. And, you know, uh, right now, the noblest thing would be would be to sort people that are on the cusp, pull them over to your way of thinking, and be a peacekeeper. That's the best thing you can do. Uh, but, the, of course, it's a difficult thing to do. It's one of the most difficult things to do of all. But, uh, you know... Uh, there's plenty of good biblical admonitions to that effect, isn't there? All the great teachers did. You know, all, all the of teachers all pointed of to that. James, I can't thank you enough for coming on. And I would really, that was actually a great way to kind of tie up a lot of things that have flowed through this show tonight. Um, I know you're doing a, a fair amount of uh, interviews right now. And... Uh, you're also on Facebook, is that correct? Yes, yes, I'm on Facebook. People can reach you there. Yeah. And you, the website where of record for you is emvsinfo.blogspot.com. You know it better than me. I made it a point to pull it up because I know you always forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Now I know... Now I know that that we 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 this this was a connection because I remember things I go James is not going to remember that website. So, um and right now you can go over there's a YouTube there of the uh 122112 Return of Electric Consciousness show with Shuni and Tours. Uh, shout out to Shuni. He's been uh he's been a real friend to me and Tours as well. And uh, so look at that, and our friend Crystal has done some incredible work once again, and you will find articles posted both at EMV's Info and on OffPlanetRadio.com. Crystal's latest article is uh, is posted on my blog. Because and it's a good one. Yeah, and she did an interview with the 100th Monkey Show, <clears throat> and that's posted as well because... She really goes into some things there that for Crystal were kind of deep. And Crystal's deep anyway, so now you got an ocean to swim in. <laughs> Our friend Crystal, she's going to be back early next year. James, thanks a lot for coming on. We're going to close it out for tonight. It's been kind of a 
Well, it's been an interesting evening and a long evening. Um, 12-21-2012 is coming. And uh, listen to the show again and see if it speaks to you. This is All Playing the Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Um, Really, really look for it.